Welcome to Sealing God's People with your host, Dennis Beard, talking about the present truth. Notice in uh, 2 Peter, the first chapter, that in the Pentecostal reign of the Holy Ghost, at Acts 2, the Holy Ghost was given. That was the former reign. This is that spoken by the prophet Joel in the last day, saith God, I'll pour out my spirit. That's the former reign. But we're also told there's coming a latter reign. Ask if you reign in the time of the latter rain. The Lord will make bright clouds, send forth showers to everyone grass in the field. It's the last great rain of his strength. There is a key word there in the signet. That's the sign of it. And in Haggai 2, the festive prophet, the prophet of the feast, it says in the 21st day of the seventh month in Haggai 2. Well, of course, we know that is the seventh day in the Feast of Tabernacles. It goes from the 15th, where you offer, in addition to all the other offerings, 13 bullocks. Then on the 16th, which is the second day of the feast, you offer 12 bullocks. Then on the 17th, or the third day, you offer 11 bullocks. Then right on successively, on the 18th, of that month or that fourth day you offer uh, the ten bullets and it goes successfully down successively down to where you have on the first day 13 second day 12 third day 11 fourth day 10 fifth day 9 sixth day uh, 8 seventh day 7 now we add these up then there will come a total of 70. It is also noteworthy to put uh, that in order in Genesis 10, the table of the nations, God says there's 70 nations. So there's a bullock for every nation. That bullock for every nation means that Jesus has already bought and paid the redemption price, not only for mankind, but for all the nations of this world. For the entire cosmos. Because when Adam fell, he was a microcosm of all creation. For God had given Adam the dominion over all the works of his hands. So when Adam fell, the whole creation fell. Before then, the wolf was not attacking the lamb. The lion was not attacking and the dog and cats fighting each other. The snakes weren't biting with their venomous uh, fangs. Everything changed. But then going back to Paradise Restored and the regeneration, then nothing at all will destroy or hurt in my holy mountain, God said. Well, there has to be a regeneration. There has to be a restitution of all things. Jesus paid for it. He paid for that. Last day move of God, there's more blood in that last season of God than all the other feasts combined. That lets us know that the last great reign of his strength will be far, far greater than anything in the other previous season of God, which are a shadow of things to come. It all has to do with the prophetic eschatology last day events, and we're given to know these things. It's given to us to know the times and the seasons there in that First Thessalonians 5 verse 1. Paul states that to the church at Thessalonica. It's superfluous for me to write unto you that that time that we are children of the day, that that day of the Lord shall not overtake us as a thief in the night. We're children of the day. The children of the day are the wise, and the wise shall understand these things, Daniel 12. The wicked cannot understand these things. It's not given to them to know because the spirit of the world is in their heart. They have believed a worldly church. They believe the worldly message. They believe the worldly mammon or money message. Those are the ones that will be surprised the hypocrites. That's Isaiah 28. 
when God arises to do his work, his strange work, and to bring to pass his act, his strange act. Don't mock at it. There'll be mockers in the last days. Where's the promise of his coming? Don't mock at it, lest your bands be made strong. What are the bands? The bands of your heart. He hardened Pharaoh's heart because Pharaoh refused to hear the word of God. Because of that, God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Well, someone said, but that was a predestination of God. Predestination is according to the foreknowledge of God. Since God is not subject to time and space, he knows the end from the beginning. He knows all. He knows what we're going to do before we do it. We have a free will, but because he is God, that has made us not we ourselves, he knows what we're going to do before we do it. And this is not from some algorithm. It's not some test that man does in kinesics or body language. This is the all-knowing, self-existent, eternal God that made you, made each of us, made you. He knows every cell in your body. He knows not only your heart, your spirit, but he tried the reins of the heart. That's your motive and everything before you even do or act on any type of situation in your life. He already knows what you're going to do. But he still, even though the work of God will come to pass, and that is, that is determined will be done, he still will be sought for these things that will prevail in the last days for the body of Christ in the glory of the Lord. We are to seek the Lord God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our passion. And when we search for him with all of our heart, we will find him. That's a diligently seeking the Lord our God. The last day work of the Holy Ghost is not our work, but it's revealed through the body of Christ. That is a determinate counsel of God in all things that he would be glorified. Everything we do is for the glory of his power. We stand in the strength of his might, not ours. So God has shown forth his glory in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of ourselves. The Lord is that spirit. We know that. But then the message goes on. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. So he is leading us and guiding us through the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that all we have to do is simply obey it. What is the new thing? And how much of a change is it? Well, from the law to Jesus was a dramatic change. It was totally a dramatic, profound change in that Jesus said, except you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life. Well, here you are, a Pharisee, and you're hearing this, and all you do is subscribe to that law, and it says you abstain from things strangled and from the blood. Do not drink the blood or eat that blood, because it is the life of all flesh, the life of all living. Therefore, you abstain from it. And Jesus said a radical change, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life. The 70 that he had chosen, along with the other 12, said this is a hard saying. Who can obey it? Who can receive that? And they left him. As the 70 left him. And 70 is very profound in the word of God because it has to do with restitution, restoration. We find that in Daniel 9, 24. 70 weeks that are turned upon that city, Jerusalem, and that holy city to rebuild and restore the walls and the streets, even in troublous times. That's a restoration. Why does it need to be restored? Because in Acts 3, 20 and 21, the word of God states explicitly, the heavens must receive Jesus until the times 
of the restitution or restoration of all things. We need to focus on all things. What are the all things? What are they? Well, our th- all things is all faith. Faith that was once delivered to the saints is a substance of things, hope for. The evidence of things not seen. Jesus stated that. I have many things to tell you disciples, but you're not able to bear them now. It means there's more future truth coming. But I'll send you the Holy Ghost. That comforter, he will speak of me. For all that the Father has given is given unto me. He'll be glorified with the Father's own self. And he will show you things which will come to pass. There's faith. Those are the things of faith. And we grow in faith and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We add to our faith virtue, being virtuous before our Lord Jesus Christ. Add to our virtue knowledge. My people perish for lack of knowledge. We don't stop there. We add to our knowledge temperance. Those that strive for the mastery must be temperate, self-controlled in all things, in all things of faith. Temperance, then you add to temperance patience. That after you've done the will of God, we have need of patience that we will receive a full reward. Let patience have her perfect work. What is that patience? In Revelation 13, we see that this son of perdition, the man of sin, along with this nations, nations all gathered together, seven heads, ten horns, and ten crowns upon their horns, that they are the religious system of the world. The nations of the world that have come together and will be hated of all these nations for the Lord's name's sake, Jesus. And we find in this government that an antichrist will come out of it. A son of perdition, a man of sin, who opposeth all that is God or that is worship, know that he has God, setteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This man of sin, this son of perdition, has a mark. These governments have a mark. They're in uh, the same ideology. They're in the same false base, false base system there is in the world. And it is the governments that will come against Jesus and those that follow him because we're not of the world. We're in the world, but not of the world. And because of that, we will be hated of all nations for his name's sake. Jesus said, I forewarned you. John 16. The days will come. They will deliver you out of their synagogues, cashing your name out for evil, out of the churches. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killed you will think that they did God a service. These things they will do unto you. Notice he said these things. That's faith. Knowing these things that are coming upon the earth to try the earth. Oh, earth, 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 hear ye the word of the Lord. These things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. Well, even the little children can follow the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 John 2, 12 through 14. John in his epistle states, I write to you little children because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. You're born again, born of the water and the spirit. But you've grown from a baby to little children because you have known the Father. You know that Jesus is the Father of glory, that he is the Lord. You know that he is the Lord Jehovah God Almighty. Jesus states that in the Constitution of the Kingdom of Heaven, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Jesus makes a profound statement. Not all that say to me, Lord, Lord, will be able to enter the kingdom of heaven. But only those that have done the will of God. It'll be a, a case of a mistaken identity. 
these then will start professing unto Jesus. Lord, we have done many wonderful works in your name. We call the name of Jesus. We are, we have and have had the Holy Ghost. And we have done these works. We've done many wonderful, wonderful works in your name. And in your name, we've cast out devils. And in your name, we have prophesied in your name. Jesus said, many will come in my name and shall deceive many. Well, how do we know the truth? Well, Jesus said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Iniquity? Iniquity is lawlessness. It's not obeying the leading of the Holy Ghost. It's not knowing the voice of Jesus and obeying it. And the only ones that will be able to do that are the ones that hear his voice. We go from lambs, go up to sheep. He told Peter that. Peter, there when you're young, you'll walk whithersoever thou wouldest. But when you're older, you'll walk where thou wouldest not. This he signified by what death he should glorify God. Previous to that, he said, Peter, you lovest thou me more than these fish that you have caught? 153 fish. Notice that Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Those are the newborn babe. Those are the little children. Then he asked him again the second time, Peter, lovest thou me more than these? Lord, you know I love you. Feed my sheep. Now they've gone from lamb to sheep. One more time, third time, and the third day, I'll raise you up and you'll live in my sight. Anytime the Lord mentions something three times, it refers to resurrection. In the third day, I'll raise you up and you'll live in my sight. Jesus on the third day will be resurrected. It always has to do with resurrection. Jesus asked Peter the third time. Peter, lovest thou me more than thee? Peter being grieved that the Lord asked him again the third time. Lord, you know I love you. Feed my sheep. When you're young, you'll walk where so ever thou wouldest. When you're older, you'll walk where thou wouldest not. This he spoke to Peter, signifying by what death he should glorify God. Well, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. Who knows the voice then? Only the sheep, not the little children. Not newborn babes. They're unskillful in the word of righteousness. That's Hebrews 5. Many go through life. Being born again, they have been uh, repented and baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Born of the water. For the remission of their sins. Man received the Holy Ghost. Born of the Spirit. The promise unto you, to your children, means they're far off, even to as many as the Lord our God shall call. They're babies. They're the newborn babes that desire the sincere, sincere miracle of the word they may grow thereby. But they don't grow. They're told in their churches, in the worldly churches, that's enough. Be at ease in Zion. Eat, drink, and be merry, you're saved not realizing that you have to grow up into Jesus in all things, in all truth, in the new thing, making new wine, making ourselves new wineskins. They are totally have no idea to that they are called for that, for that work of the ministry. Now, that's a sad state of affairs. They have no knowledge that they are called for a higher glory. They're called to press toward that mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. They're totally unaware of it. Why? Because it's not preached. It's not taught that we must grow up in him in all things to a perfect image of Jesus Christ in order to be presented to Jesus a glorious church without spot, without blemish. We have to be a perfect mirror image of Jesus Christ. And this they're ignorant of. 
They have no knowledge that that's what is required. Jesus stated it in the Constitution of the Kingdom of Heaven. Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Well, someone will say, well, Luke 6, he didn't say all of that. And that's the same message. Well, notice in Luke 6, Jesus was coming down from the mountain. And Matthew 5, 6, and 7 in the Constitution of the Kingdom of Heaven. Jesus was going up the mountain. He preached it more than once. But every I was dotted and every T crossed in the full consummation of things in the constitution of the kingdom of heaven in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, not only laying the foundation, but the pillars and the final capstone of the ones that will be able to enter the kingdom of heaven. He builds it from the the foundation, until the last stone, the chief cornerstone, the capstone, is done. And that is the whole kingdom of heaven. He didn't say anything about being born again. He did not say anything about having the Holy Ghost. Those are given to get to those attributes and be a partaker of Jesus' divine nature. We have to obey the leading of the Holy Ghost unto perfection. And he gave us a fivefold ministry to do that. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for us to come to the full maturity and a full image of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. When Jesus presents to himself a glorious church, It's a mirror image of himself without spot, without blemish. Perfect in all of her ways. The bride has made herself ready. But we're told, well, you're saved. You believe one verse. You're a little baby. And that's all there is. And once saved, always saved. And that's all there is to it. That is a lie. A gross lie. A colossal lie. And they say it without any observation of the truth in obedience to the truth in a progressive glorification of the body of Christ in walking in the present truth of the word of God, the proceeding word of God. When Jesus stated, a man shall live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's a proceeding word. And it's progressive. We see that in Proverbs 4. The path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more into the perfect day. What is the light? The light is the life. All life should be in Christ Jesus our Lord. And in him was life. And the life was the light of God that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. The light is the life. And it's the God life that we have to live. But how far and how high in glory do we have to go? Well, to a perfect measure of Jesus when he gave us a fivefold ministry to be there to achieve that, not through our own works, not not through the works of the law, but by faith in God. It's the righteousness of God by faith. And that is only through the Lord Jesus Christ in obedience to him in all things and all truth. And that's the colossal lie that's been given to the church world that you can have the world and you can have Jesus too. And it's a prosperity gospel. Join our church and we'll have a nightclub atmosphere. We'll have singing and dancing and we'll have all these great orators and musicians and singers. And we'll just have a high old time just like the world, a social club, but where the blood of Jesus is not preached. Somebody said, what do you mean the blood is not preached? Well, where is the blood of Jesus? The blood is in the New Testament given for you. Jesus stated that very simply in John's gospel, except you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life. How do you eat the flesh of Jesus? How do you drink his blood? Well, how do you eat the flesh? In the volume book is written to me, I come to do thy will, O God, for a body that has prepared me. And when you drink that blood of Jesus, that blood is in the New Testament given for you. 
we drink that blood, we hear by reading the word of God, and we hear in understanding that word. We have revelation, which is the lightning. Then there's thunder. That is attentively hearing the noise of his voice. Attentively hearing the noise is not only do we understand it, but we obey it. That's given to us in the book of Job, 37th chapter, about the five voices, the voice of the Lord Jesus mentions it five times. And we are told very at the very beginning, be attentively hearing the noise of his voice. That means to obey it, not just to hear the word, but to do the word. Jesus said, why you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I tell you. What things? The things of faith. Faith is the substance of things so far. The evidence of things not seen. Paul said the same thing the Lord did. Jesus stated, I have many things to tell you, disciples, but you're not able to bear it now. Well, who much is given, much is required. We must bear that. The burden's on us. Paul stated the same thing. He said, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him but it is revealed by the Spirit, not through our intellect, not through our searching God with an intellectual frame of mind, going through a seminary where we learn Greek, Hebrew, Latin, Chaldee, Aramaic, whatever, but it's through the leading of the Holy Ghost. They are giving us the understanding of that word for the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth the life. And he said, but it is revealed by the Spirit. What does the Spirit do? For the Spirit searcheth all things. That's the things of faith. Not just superficially. Not just on the surface. Yea, the deep things of God. We're going into the deep. The deep calleth unto the deep. Well, what is that? The deep things of God in the crystal sea of the knowledges of God are calling to the deep in our heart, the deep things of God. And God answers by the water spout. That's a whirlwind of water, the whirlwind of the truth that comes up to God and to his throne. His throne room revelation. It's what we see in Revelation 10, 11, and 12, that the body of Christ, not the nation of Israel, but the body of Christ will attain to by doing two things. Number one, the remnant of her seed, the church, that keep the commandments of God. Those that love God keep his commandments, which are not grievous, but to the saving of our souls. And have the testimony of Jesus. What is that? Well, the testimony of Jesus is given to us in Revelation 19.10. We need to hear attentively this noise of his voice, which means we must do the will of God to even know what the voice is. We have to hear the voice in order to do his will. And the only way we can do that is not just going to church, not listen to a preacher preach, be he a, an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, a bishop, an elder of the church. We have to search God on our own. And we are told that Revel Revelation says it. We are to grow up in him in all things. Blessed he is he that readeth and keepeth the sayings of the book of this prophecy. The book of this prophecy is the, the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy given to us where we can understand the book of this prophecy. And that is the only way we can understand and hear the voice of God to obey it. <clears throat> In Romans 12, verse 1, Paul states very simply, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So he says, well, I do that. I read the word. I go to church. <clears throat> but you have to search out the book and read. Not one of these things will fail. What happens when you fasten your eyes upon the the holy writ, the holy written word of God, 
and ask the Lord to lead you and guide you in a broken and contrite spirit. Well, then the Lord moves. This is the only book, the Bible, which is alive. It's alive through the Spirit of God. Every letter in this book is an attribute of Jesus. Somebody said, what do you mean by that? <clears throat> Jesus is uh, the Alpha and Omega. That is the first and last letter of the Greek ABC theory. Everybody said, I know that. I've been to college. I've been to university. Well, he's also the Allah through the top. That's the Hebrew A to Z. He's all. He's all those attributes. And every letter in the Hebrew ABC theory is an attribute of the Lord God Almighty. Now, there's more than just 22 attributes. We understand that. But to convey that to us, the body of Christ, he gives us a holy writ that we can trust in and know it is then in truth, the holy writ, the divine scriptures uh, as were given by God there through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. It's a Theranuptus, the God breathed word of God as holy men were moved on by the spirit of God. They just, just, just didn't sit down and write what they felt through their own conscience. They wrote through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. That means that we have a holy written word of God called the Holy Writ that we can trust in. We can adhere to it and obey it. And we do that through the leading of the Holy Ghost. So every individual believer has to seek God on their own. You have to read it for yourself. Can't get it from pastor. Can't get it from the bishop or the apostle or prophet. That's well, good for them, for the perfecting of the saints, but for the individual will of God for your life. You have to search out the book and read. We're told that, that we're to present our bodies a living sacrifice, only acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. When we're reading that word of God in a true, broken, humble, and contrite spirit, not only do we have the revelation of the word, we see that light, that flash of lightning, but then there comes thunder. That's the noise of his voice. And when we hear that, we, we meditate upon that word. We ponder that word, meditating upon it. Then it goes through a fiery test. They cannot strange the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings and the glory of God resteth upon your head. Well, somebody said, well, I have faith. Well, your faith is going to be tried by fire. You read it in the word of God. You had an understanding of it. Now you've got to live it. You have to be a living epistle. You have to be that chosen generation, that royal priesthood. There, that though counted a joy when you fall all in the divers temptations. Divers temptations, many different kinds of temptations. Though your faith be tried as by fire, your faith's being tried by fire. That it may come forth as pure gold. Your wall of salvation is now built with tempered mortar that's been through the fire. But you'll see in the Old Testament, many have built their wall of salvation with untempered mortar. What they thought was the will of God, but not according to the leading of the Holy Ghost. They thought, well, what I do in my own will will please the Lord. I think I'm doing a good work. And I use the name of Jesus. I've even cast out devils in the name of Jesus. I've done many wonderful works in the name of Jesus. I prophesied in the name of Jesus. But where we missed it, we didn't do the will of Jesus. We all find the purpose of our life and do it. That we did not work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, knowing that it's God that worketh in us both the will and the do. So to hear the voice of God requires us to seek him on our own individually in the word of God. And when we do that, 
then we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We will receive and uh, get the mind of Christ. And the final consummation of that, where we're able to stand in all times of trouble, will be in the Revelation 7 apocalyptic sealing uh, of the servants of God in their forehead. The mind of Christ will be given us through the word of God. That's how you're sealed. That after you have received the word of God in present truth, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise until you receive the promised possession. Our life is hit with Christ in God and it's predicated upon us believing the word of God, seeking him, growing up into him in all truth and all things uh, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. When we do that, we will heal. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter down to the joy of the Lord. You've been ruler over a few things. You've been faithful over a few things, sorry. And I'll make you ruler over many things. You will receive a reward at his coming. And that is the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, where you will reign as kings and priests with the Lord your God during the regeneration, the thousand-year millennial reign. We cannot miss that voice of our Lord Jesus. Most do not know the voice of our Lord. They hear the voice of their conscience, and that's the reason you have so many different thousands of Christian denominations. Everybody's hearing this or that one. And because of that, not being led of the Holy Ghost in the unity of the faith, speaking the same things one mind and one accord, then we have many different divisions and we have many different heresies or denominations. A heresy is the denomination. Denomination is a heresy. It literally means what it says. Our denomination is a different denomination like we have different denominations of money. There's a dollar bill. Then there's a $5 bill. There's a $10 bill. There's a $20 bill. There's a $100 bill. Those are different denominations. Well, there are many, and we're saying denominations in Christ. God has no denominations. That is heresy. Paul said, I hear that there are divisions among you. And I partly believe it. He said, there be heresies also. Heresies in the Greek are denominations. It's a factual standing of an ideology or a faith-based system based on what you perceive to be the will of God, what you perceive to be the faith that you are following. That's a heresy based upon, and he goes on. What is it based upon? Why? Why have this heresy? So those that are approved among you, not approved of God, but approved among you, may be made manifest. You've hate to yourself, teachers having itching ears. That's the current state of the worldly church. God's calling the true church out of it. Come you out of Babylon. What is the Babylonian church? She says, I'm prosperous. I'm increased with goods, clothed, fed, and have need of nothing. I said, a queen, you're not going to have any fight of faith with me. There'll be no battle. There'll be no contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. She says, I said, a queen, I am no widow. I'm married to Jesus. And I will see no sorrow. Sorrow? All these are the beginning of sorrows. Not just one sorrow, sorrows. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Those are the beginning of birth pain. To birth Jesus Christ in us, the body of Christ. The ones that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. The faith that was once delivered to the saints. That is the testimony of Jesus. The spirit of prophecy to know these things which must shortly come to pass. Those that have an ear understand that. Tune in daily with us. Right here, download our app. If you have friends that want to go deeper in the Word of God, 
please let them know a free download of our app, Feeling God's People, and join us in this travel, this journey to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Jesus Christ, where we will be obedient in all things and all truth, and especially the new thing that God is doing now. God said, I'll do a new thing. A woman shall compass a man. That's the woman in Revelation 12, compassing the man child to birth it. God said, I'll do a new thing, though a man tell it. Yet they will not believe. Why? Because the spirit of the world is in their heart. The cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, choke the word. It becomes unfruitful. They bring forth no fruits unto perfection. Somebody said, I didn't know we had to. Unto full maturity? I thought, well, it was just once saved, always saved. You got born again. That's it. That's a lie. It's a gross lie, colossal lie. It is a monumental lie. To those that understand, then they go broken, humble, contrite, and seek the Lord for the will of God for their individual lives according to the faith that's been given to each man. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. That is not a general faith. That's not going to church and hearing a general message. What are we saying? We implore you. We admonish you, exhort you to seek the Lord God for your will that he has for your individual life, the will of God for your life, the will that he has purposely given you for his body individually. That's an individual calling of God based upon the faith he's dealt to you already. We want to contend for that faith. We want to press toward that mark and get that faith, obtain that faith that was once delivered to the saints. The only way you can do that is presenting your body a living sacrifice. Not conformed to this world, but being transformed. You can prove what that will of God is for your life. That's Romans 12, 1. Just as Paul said, work out your own salvation. Not a plan of salvation. plan of salvation is already there. It's Christ Jesus, your Lord. He is the propitiation for your sins and all of us. There's no other way. No other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved in the name of Jesus. But doing the will of God, the individual purpose that you are here on the earth has to be sought for. Good thing is, he's already given you the measure of faith to do it. Not a short measure. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. He didn't short you on it. Whatever he's called you to do, you have been given the faith or the ability to do it through the Holy Ghost, through the power of God and salvation. So you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it's God that worketh in you both the will and the do of his good pleasure. Find his will and do it. Lose your own will. He that will lose his life for the gospel's sake, the same shall find it. But he, he that seeks to save his life, to do his own will, to do his own thing, you're here and say, me and Jesus, <laughs> we've got a good thing going. He's my co-pilot. He's not your co-pilot. He's either your pilot and commander. He's not pilot at all. He's either Lord of all or not Lord at all. This is why we must do the will of God. So we don't stop it becoming born again. We don't stop it becoming growing as little children, knowing that he is the father of glory. We don't stop there at young men where the word of God is strong in us and we've overcome the wicked one. That's your revelation second and third chapter but we go on to the measure of the stature of Jesus Christ, fulfilling the will of God, every member in particular, being fitly framed together by the Lord and compacted their seal by the Lord himself. According to the measure of every part, the measure of what? The measure of faith that is given to each of us, different ministrations, different ministries, but the same spirit, that the eye can't say to the foot, I have no need of you. 
For God has put thee of more abundant honor on the less comely parts that there be no chism or division in the body. We need each other. Then the, the less comely parts have the more abundant honor. The Lord has done it that way. That's the only way we hear the voice of God and we do it. And on obedience, there to the pleasing of the Lord, hearing, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Call, chosen, and faithful in obedience to that calling. Let's do it together. We want you to join with us. We are called to the nations of this world. Over a thousand ministers in Africa alone right now crying for the true gospel being brought to them. We have brought them the truth that Jesus is the Lord God Almighty. He is the Father of glory. God manifest in the flesh. They've received the one God message. They know he's the Father. They've been born again of the water and the Spirit after they repented. They come out of the Trinity denominations and sing the one God. That's wonderful. But they've got to go on. Help us. Join us. And the Lord will bless you. Well, tune in daily to our podcast, Sealing God's People. Invite your friend. Also, our website now, which is free. It's a private website. Just go to jcic.tv where we're now have it available. We've heard from many of you throughout the different nations that you don't have a zip code like we do in America. And you've tried to join, but you couldn't because you didn't have a zip code. Please go back and try again because we've knocked all that off. We have deleted all that. And it's very simple. All you do to register, you'll have a name and a city where you're from. You can only use, if you want to, your first name. This is Jimmy, Bill, or John, or Sally, or Sue, whatever. And I'm from Nakua, whatever. I'm from Shanghai. I'm from wherever. And you're in. You won't have to have all of that other registration information in order to be registered. So we've made it very simple. Please try again. If you have any problem, please let us know and we will remedy that. We want you to be a part of it. Again, that's jcic.tv. There's the website. Go and register. You can ask questions. You can give your comments as we all press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Well, until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Spirit saying, Behold the real Jesus.